Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another Form Check Friday. Welcome to the show. This is, of course, the series where we take user submitted videos. We critique them on this sweet ass TV over here. We try to help you guys become better technical lifters, stay further from injury, and hopefully people who we're not even reviewing here can take something away from this video and use it to increase their own efficiency within the power lifts. Our first video submission comes from Firat and he's doing some conventional deadlifts. Now we're seeing a pretty common fault here. The hips are rising before the bar starts coming off the floor. Uh, they're rising before or a little bit faster than the trunk is coming up. And that's a pretty common fault. One of the reasons that happens is because we're not, say, using the quads properly. We're not making it a push off the floor. Uh, we're not maintaining enough tension through the glutes and the upper back and the mid back as we initiate the lift. So the biggest things I want you to do here are try to be a little bit more patient off the floor. Try to keep that upper back tighter so that it rises at the same time as the bar. You're not seeing the hips come up behind you. And again, try to really focus on making the deadlift a push. I know I say this a lot, but if you can keep that weight back a little bit, um, you're gonna avoid what happens near the end of the reps here. And you can kind of see from this angle that he starts to drift out towards his forefoot and then the bar starts to actually get away from Firat a little bit. So those few things I think will really help you in terms of cueing. As far as accessory movements, the old standard, the pause deadlift, going to be a big friend of yours here. Um, if you can pause just off the floor and reinitiate the lift, again, that's gonna be a good cue on sort of how to initiate the movement twice, essentially. Uh, if you can end up having to do more work in that disadvantaged position, you're going to get better at it faster and you're going to become a more efficient lifter in that position because of that uh, excessive work there. But that's, that's essentially my critique here, Firat, so hopefully that helps you, buddy. So this next video here comes from an email named StrengthMM. Uh, I'm not sure what the name is. There wasn't really any attached with this. But what's awesome about this is that the guy cleans the bar off the floor to put it on his back so he can squat. I think that's pretty cool. Um, really just looks like he's working out in his basement. There's like an eye chart on the wall. I don't know what exactly is going on here, but props to you for making it work, man. In terms of your squat technique, one of the things that I'm seeing is that when you get to the bottom, you're getting really, really loose. Everything's rocking forward. What I'd like to see you do is maintain a little bit more tension in the bottom position. You almost nail it on this third rep here. But again, I would start working without the pause, depending on the intent of your lift. Obviously, if your intent is to do pause squats in the rock bottom position, you're doing a great job. If your intent is for this to be your competition movement, then I would try to cut depth a little bit higher and I would also try to maintain a little bit more tension, try not to relax in the bottom and try to keep that weight from rocking too far forward on your feet in the bottom position. This next video from the same email address, again, I'm sorry buddy, I don't know your name, but we're taking a look at your lifts here. Um, just a little bit of overextension in the setup for your conventional deadlift here. Looks like you're working really, really hard to arch and extend your back and I think it's going a little bit too much into extension. I think if you can cue those ribs down in the front, try to create a little bit more of a neutral position, it's gonna go a long ways for making sure that there isn't such a pronounced sticking point. Uh, that's one thing that I've seen anecdotally associated with really, uh, really pronounced sticking points is a tendency or a habit to overextend in both the squat and the deadlift. Um, so that's one thing I would try to work on is as you're initiating, make sure you pull those lats, pull a fair bit of extension into the upper mid back but you specifically don't need as much extension in your low back because you're better able to create that extension. We're actually going past the point of correcting it, correcting it into another kind of fault. Our next video here comes from Brian J. Now, Brian, there's a couple things with the bench press here that I would try to work on. Uh, number one, it looks like your elbows are fairly soft on your unrack. It also looks like, and this is probably the fault of the equipment that you're working with, it looks like you're losing a fair bit of tension as you go to unrack the bar. One of the things that I really like to do with the unrack on the bench press specifically is I like to try and ensure that I'm unracking with just the triceps. I like to try to get the shoulders set in the same position they're gonna remain in and maintain in throughout the entirety of the set and the unrack should be just triceps. The second thing we're looking at here is we're looking at your deadlift. Now it looks like to me we could do a much better job of extending the back you're looking very rounded over as you initiate the pull. 
uh, and it looks like you're in a, a fairly flex position throughout your lumbar and your mid back. Now the pulls look nice and smooth. Uh, if you choose to continue as a round back deadlifter with the sumo deadlift, a couple things I specifically would try to throw in are some banded or chain deadlifts to really hammer that top end because that is where you're going to get hung up every time. Now, if you should choose to take a step back with the weights that you're using, reevaluate your technique and your form and uh, the way that your body is oriented throughout the lift, uh, that would be the biggest thing I would address is trying to flatten out that back and get a little bit more or a lot more of a neutral back angle and maintain that throughout your lifts. Right now it looks like you're just pulling into a position where you're pretty flexed. Again, it's kind of hard to tell from this angle, but that's what I'm seeing here, man. Our next video here is some more conventional deadlifts. These come from Miguel, and Miguel is in Nicaragua. And actually, cool story, I traveled around Nicaragua for a while, and it is an awesome country, so I don't know, go check it out, and shout out to Miguel for sending in a video and watching us from Nicaragua. I think that was really cool. Um, so with Miguel's deadlifts here, couple things. Uh, we're seeing the same sort of hip rise or hip raise pattern. So you can go back to the beginning, listen to that same advice that I gave fear at. Um, so we're trying or what, what you need to be doing or what you should attempt to do is again make the deadlift a little bit more of a push, try to be a little bit more patient off the floor. We're trying to put ourselves in a good position for the second half of the lift with the first half of the lift, if that makes sense. One of the intents of the first pull, if you want to call it that, and that's generally how I break up the deadlift, is into kind of a first pull, second pull idea, uh, is to essentially set yourself up to be in a good mechanically advantaged position for the second pull, or the second phase of the deadlift. It should be a push, then a pull. Working on trying to get knee extension working for us in the first phase of the lift, uh, and making sure that we're tight enough through the posterior chain to brace the position so when the knees extend, everything comes up nice and tight. The other thing, Miguel, is I'd work on trying to achieve and maintain a more neutral spinal position. So it looks like we could do a little bit of a better job of setting the lats, really working on trying to drive those shoulder blades down the back. One cue that I like to use is to pinch the armpits shut really, really hard. Um, the other would be to try and pull the bar against you uh, in order to get the lats to work better and to position those shoulder blades a little bit lower down your back. So if you think about this being your hips and this being your shoulders, if we can essentially move that point of contact or that joint down your back by moving the shoulder blade down, that's going to shorten the lever and allow you to have a little bit better leverage against the bar when you deadlift. So let's think about those couple of things. Again, pause deadlifts probably be a really good uh, technical learning lift for you uh, to allow you to kind of experiment with the lift, work on position and really feel that out. So that's one thing I would work on, but uh, that's, that's my critique for you, Miguel. All right, so our next video comes from Thomas. And Thomas is a big jacked dude. Um, he's a strongman competitor, doing his first powerlifting meet or has probably done it by now because we're currently working on videos from December 14th, but uh, Thomas is getting into some powerlifting at the time of this video and doing some sumo deadlifts here. So a couple things I'm noticing, number one is we're really kind of jerking into the bar to get the bar started, and I think that's causing a little bit of an issue with maintaining your initial starting position. Because it looks like, especially for a big guy, you're able to pull into a really, really good sumo position. Looks like we might be missing a little bit of extension from that low back and, and losing a little bit of that ideal sort of minor lordosis or minor curve in the, in the low back, in the pelvis. Um, but when you go to pull into the bar, we're not setting tension into the bar. We're not pulling the slack out, if you will. Um, so one thing that I want you to try to do is instead of just sitting yourself down to position, I want you to engage your lats against the bar and, and, and pull your hips down to position. Pull your hips down to position instead of sitting down to position. This will help you take the slack out of the bar and help you maintain the same position as you're setting when you initiate the lift. The next thing is gonna be patience off the floor, which is something I've been preaching this whole video now, um, but really work on trying to maintain position in that first few inches, especially with the sumo deadlift this becomes very, very important. And if you lose that position in the first few inches, it's going to take it out of you in the last few inches. And you can see there's a little bit of a sticking point and then you're smashing through it because you're very, very strong, uh, probably through the back from doing strongman. So 
I would work on those couple of things, uh, as well as trying not to overdo the lockout. It looks like you're really smashing the knees, really reefing back on the bar. I think a lot of times people maybe put too much into the bar. Now, generally speaking, what I'll try to advise people do is put in just enough to get the bar to where it's going. I'm not a proponent of move everything as fast as you can and accelerate everything and drive through it and you know make the bar jump off your back during your warm ups and stuff like that. It's just not my style, it's not the way I coach my athletes, so it's not what I'm gonna recommend here. Uh, I would say put as much into the bar as you need to to get it done. I, I will always recommend a lifter be smooth over being explosive, and I think you'll find that being smooth more often than not will produce speed. Uh, and that's something that um, I've, I've been a, a student of and something that I'm very much a proponent of and I would encourage to see in other athletes. Anyways guys, that's gonna wrap up today's Form Check Friday. We're currently working on videos from December 14th, which I know it's really far behind. I know a lot of people are saying, uh, like Thomas here, he's doing a, a meet in February. That's now passed and unfortunately we weren't able to get him his feedback in time. So one thing that we're gonna do is next week we're gonna do, I haven't, we haven't figured out if it's gonna be five or if it's gonna be seven yet, but we're gonna do a form check Friday every day of the week. Now, like I said, that might be five, that might be seven, but we're gonna attempt to catch up as much as we can by putting out a full week of form checks. Now this is for you guys. This is something we wanna do to try to catch up, get back to a little bit more current lifts. I know we have a ton of submissions pouring in every day, and we really do want to try to get to everybody, so this is, uh, this is for you. Anyways, thanks for tuning in. Um, if you guys are interested, we're going to be having these shirts uh, as well as anything that's in the store right now on sale for a short period of time longer before we switch over. We're gonna get the Funny Money shirts and American Apparel Zip Up hoodies with this design on it going right away. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Thanks for tuning in. Like, subscribe, comment below if you have any questions. And we'll see you guys next week for all of the form checks.